Let's just rewrite. So what is this saying? This is saying that there exists a beta and a b such that um, b times w prime is that's going to equal to beta times 1. Okay? But 1 is just the all 1's vector, so this is just a bunch of, of betas. And bw is bigger than beta. Okay? So here I'm just kind of moving symbols around, but now if you think about what we're trying to prove, what I started with was, what I started was a, a vector in W, and I wanted to prove that it was a vertex of my polytope. And you see what I did is I just produced a B and a beta such that beta dot W is bigger than beta, but beta dot every other element in the collection is less than or equal to beta. Okay. And so what that means is that W is where the where the linear function b dot x is maximized. Okay. W maximizes b dot x, and therefore it's a vertex. And that's the end of the proof. Any questions about it? Uh, when you require that, that the, the only maximum is set at W? The, the thing is, in order, in, in order to be a... Yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of implicit that the thing is that... Uh, let's see. W is in W. So what is your concern again? That in order in order to be a vertex, you need um, exact that, that the maximum the, the maximum is attained at least uh, at most once, because uh -huh. otherwise you have a line. If you have it in uh -huh. then you have a line. So it would it would be. A so maybe maybe I should say that I'm um, sweeping something under the rug, which is something small. What what I what is it? Mm -hmm. Look at. Okay, so I, I agree there's something small to say here, and that's either thank you or no thank you for catching it. But <laughs> <laughs> no, but this is good, this is good. Um, there's a tiny step to do here, which is that we should also show not only that b dot all the other w primes are less than or equal to beta, I should show that b dot anything is less than or equal to b dot w. So I need to show that b dot anything is less than b dot w for any p in the polytope which is not w. But the thing is that any p in the polytope is a combination of w and the other W primes. Okay. Now B dot W has W has the biggest dot product with B, and all the other guys have smaller dot products with B. So that means that when you when you write any point in P as a linear combination of, of things, then the the part of the linear combination involving W gives you the correct bound, whereas the the other terms corresponding to the things in W prime give you smaller bounds, and that actually uh, that actually proves this. I think this is something else. I mean, I, I said it quickly, so you can either uh, watch the video again if I said it too quickly, or, or maybe we can also talk about this in the in the forum. But it's a it's a small argument. I, I agree that I'm hiding something here. Okay. okay. Any other questions about this argument? By the way, so you guys walked in and you have no idea what we're proving. <laughs> uh, and uh, it doesn't seem like it, but we're proving something very simple, which is that every polytope 
is the convex hull of its vertices. And I think if you see this, you cannot at all tell this. Um, <laughs> and, and I think now you also realize why it is that I spent all this time proving these spark elements, which seem like these things that are maybe a little bit technical, it's not clear why they're useful. But you see that actually the Farkas lemma is also more or less equivalent to saying a polytope is a convex hull of its vertices, something very important. And that's, and that's why we, we went through the work of proving the Farkas lemma first. Uh, now we're getting better. Now we're getting better at this. It's a little bit like, like you know, if you want to play football, you have to, you have to sit and play. Does that mean you know? <laughs> <laughs> and only when you can do that, and then you can, you can have the fundamentals, and you can really go and have fun. And all these fundamentals on Farkas lemma, Karatelori, there are things that are maybe not the most fun thing to do, but, but, uh, but now we have them, and, and we are going to get a lot of very useful results. We have maybe more five or ten more minutes. So, okay. So let me just say some some other things that seem obvious, but we have to prove. Other obvious facts about polytopes and their faces. So let's make a proposition of it. Let's say that P is a polytope and B are the vertices. So what we just proved is that P is the convex hull of B. But there are several other things that seem obvious, but they're not that obvious. So here's one. Any face F is actually a polytope. That's, you, you, you would hope that this is true. That if you take a polytope and you take a face, that's also a polytope. Any face of of P is a polytope. That's true. And what should be the vertex set of F? Basically, just be the, the vertices of the polytope that happen to be in F. which ones are on the face, these four. An obvious thing is that S should be the convex hull of those guys, and it's true, and uh, it's true what it requires a proof. Another kind of obvious fact is that if F and G are faces of the polytope, then the intersection should be a face. reasonable to you? It seems reasonable. Maybe you would have complained if we hadn't talked about the empty face at the beginning of the class, right? Because it could be that if you intersect the, the top face and the bottom face of the cube, the intersection is empty, and you might argue that's not a face. And actually, that's kind of why we decided the empty set is so, so that this property, which we want it to be true, and, you, and you'll, you'll, see, you'll see why it's, it's quite a crucial property. We really need this property. And this is basically why we decree the, the empty set to be a face. It's not, it doesn't hurt you a lot to accept that. So this is true. Another statement is that if F is a face of P, okay, and if G is a face of F, maybe, 
Evet. So this thing got confused. This thing gets confused if I lift two at the same time. So anyway, if this is f, and then I take a face of f, right? So f is a square. Maybe this is a face. G. Then I just want to say that g is also a face of p. And again, this is 
also a nice exercise. Okay. Having done this, these are all very useful properties that are going to allow us to argue a lot of things without, without going back to the Farkas lemma so much and the Dori so much. Now, these properties are going to be useful for a lot of arguments. Okay. Um, I think that's it for now. So let's stop here and we will continue on Monday. ¿Alguna pregunta? Yo tengo una pregunta que no sé, no sé cuál es la respuesta y es qué va a pasar con el video. Eh, pero vamos a ver. Esto está, está grabado el audio, queda grabado esto y hay una cámara, entonces alguna de esas debe funcionar. Eh, vamos a ver. Y les voy a mandar, les voy a mandar un PDF de esto. Y también, de acuerdo a eso, decidimos si la otra clase es aquí otra vez o si vamos a hablar más lo menos. Sí. ¿Pero sí, sí se ve bien? Sí. Sí, no sé. Bueno. Ahí sigue grabando. Ah, sí. Ah, sí. Y aquí también. ¿Listo? ¿Listo? Entonces nos vemos de lunes. Sí, para los que llegaron, después hablamos de varias cositas. Una es que vamos a, vamos a reunirnos por acá cada dos semanas. Eh, el miércoles, en los, los miércoles de, en los que no hay tarea.